I recently got a harp. I do not know how to play it yet professionally. So I wanted to multi-sample it into my MIDI controller so that I can use it using my keys, basically. This is going to be a two-part process of me first getting the audio files and then me storing the audio files into the sampler plugin on Logic Pro. Step one is to make sure that your harp is completely tuned. So I'm using this bad boy. I'm putting him on the soundboard. That's where the sound comes out on a harp. So whatever instrument you're using, you just want to tune that completely up, basically. So I'm just going to check. You will tune this up in post-production anyway, but make sure that it's as tuned as possible. Now that the harp is tuned, you need to think about where you're going to place the instrument. So I chose um, our pterodome, which is underground and the ceilings are really high. And the reason I've chosen it is because there's a lot of reverb in here. I don't know if you can hear from my voice, but it gives, it gives the instrument a lot of reverb already. Um, and I kind of want to see how that comes out in an audio recording. Second is mic placement. So I've gotten this, it's an oyster mic for the harp. And so that would go onto the soundboard. I'm also going to experiment with my condenser mic behind us, which is an Aston Origin. I will put all of the links to everything that I'm using in the description below. This is where I have my mic set up. So this is the Oyster mic. I had a couple of problems with that. It came with a silver back and I put the silver back on and then it wasn't working. So I've kind of figured that out on my own. I put the little sticky bit on the back and just put it straight on without the silver back because the silver back was giving a weird tinny ring. This is my Aston, so I've set it up a little bit further back, which still gets some of that reverb of the room. I don't want too much because I don't want it to be too wet because I can always add reverb in afterwards. So everything, nothing seems to be distorting, whether I do soft or loud. Um, so I'm ready to go to take my samples. I'm going to choose three velocities, which means softest to loudest for my instrument. So for example, this will be velocity one, then two, and then three. So I actually ended up doing four velocities. I did super soft, soft, medium, and loud. Um, and you do that for every single note of your instrument. So you just wanna record each note at super soft, soft, medium, and loud. So once you've done that, you wanna slice all of your individual notes um, and you wanna fade them so that they come in and out really nicely. Then you want to control click and go to name and color and you want to insert the individual name of each note and its velocity. This is just to help you organize and know where everything is. So if it's a G, G super soft, medium, loud, etc. Now what you want to do is open up a new track with the multi sampler, which you can see on the left here. And all you do is literally drag each velocity to the note. So here I'm dragging the first velocity and then I'm bringing the velocity down to where I want that soft to sit. So I think it was like zero to, yeah, zero to 27 for my super soft part. And then what you do is you double click it Oh, I'm putting them all in. Okay. <laughs> so you drag them all in, choose your velocities. It's really as easy as that. And you can fool around with those velocities um, and see where you like them to sit on your MIDI keyboard. Because as soon as you drag them in, you can start playing them, right? So I'm just assigning a color to my audio here just so that I can... Diff... Diff... Uh, diff... Diff... <laughs> what am I saying? Differentiate between the different notes. <sighs> then what we want to do is we want to double click. Okay, so this is important. So double click, go to edit, and we want to retune it. Now, when I retune for some reason, it would skip an octave or go up an octave or down. So just make sure that you bring the octave back down. So retune and then correct the octave. So if it's a C1 or a C4 or whatever, um, you just want to make sure it's the original octave. Now, another thing you can do is highlight the note and drag it over the semitone above. Um, and the reason I've done that is because I, I forgot to record um, the semitones in the harp. So I just did 
the major scale basically. Um, and so if you just drag them over the semitone, it literally just sounds, um, it sounds perfect. So that there's no worry with doing that. But if you want to go back and do all of your semitones, um, yeah, maybe you should have watched this part of the video first. <laughs> so then the end thing that we want to do is save the harp sample that we have, right? So we want to save it as, I saved mine as harp Bellamy. And then what that means is I can open that up as a multi sample in any of my projects now and use this as a harp plugin. So I've created a fresh project here and I've just selected a new track and I've opened up the multi sampler plugin. So then when I open that up, I just select the Harp Bellamy from the drop down menu at the top and there's all my samples that I've dragged into the multi sampler. They've all been sliced, faded before I've dragged them in and they're all completely tuned up and ready to go. So um, the end product will then sound something like this. hope I've explained all of this really good because um, this is the first tutorial video that I've done and I hope it helps you to experiment with some of your instruments so that you can, you know, use them in a different way. But I think it turned out really beautiful. I love how raw and authentic it is. It's perfect for this project because I wanted a really raw Celtic carp. So I'm happy with it. Let me know if you have any other questions because I'll be happy to answer them in the comments and everything else I've used will be in the description below.